you may have a piece of rugby league history that you've forgotten all about. It might be in your garage or up in the attic or in a box somewhere. Well, on the fan, we want to uncover the lot. That's what we've ripped off this. Now, the biggest collection of rugby league stuff I've ever come across belongs to a guy by the name of Dan Payne. He has a business, Dan's NRL Collectibles. And on the fan, he's going to appraise items for us this year. And here he is. G'day, Dan. Oh, hello, Bossy. Now, the fans have been great even since last week when we promoted on our first show that we've got the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow. And the first item is from Jim of Mossvale, Southern Highlands of New South Wales. Have a look at this. A Balmain Tigers... Ashtray. Uh, rugby league cards from 70 years ago. It's a South mug, but have yeah. a close look. I love the Rabbitos. This is the program from the State of Origin game that was played in America, in Los Angeles, in 1987. It's the new Pro-Yo. I've kept a sticker set for many years from my childhood days, but it wasn't until a decade later that I realised the one of Gary Jack has his Jats crackers showing. But this is outrageous. Oh. You, you know of this? I've heard about this. Uh, bossy, and um, just to confirm there, as you can oh, see, yeah. his appendage is... His appendage is just... Yeah. You're, telling, you're trying to tell me that they released a whole set to the public of these stickers yes. with Gary's yes. appendage showing. It did, unfortunately. It was an oversight from scandals, and um, school kids were collecting them at the time, so... This is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, how, how much is that worth, then? Like, oh, well, that this was... sticker on its own, how much is it worth? Oh, that'd be a $5 sticker. $5 for Gary's appendage. Yep. That's the whole a set. The whole set would be two hundred dollars. This is a plastic rain poncho. What's that worth? Well, they're worth about a dollar fifty in any reject shop. Good, good answer. Now remember that figure. What if they had a rugby league attachment from right. Matt Ellis of Dubbo? He sent us a photo of he and his brother Andrew in ponchos that were emblazoned with the Adelaide Rams logo from 97 oh. or 98. Why didn't you say so? I didn't know it was this. This is, um, this is the holy grail of rugby league. The holy grail? It's the holy grail. Poncho with Adelaide Rams on it. Why, why is that? Well, it's so rare. At, at the end of the game, uh, they'll generally throw it in the bin, and I don't know of any in existence. Is that right? So if someone did have them, though, where, where possibly could they be kept? Well, hopefully they've got to lock the way in a safety deposit box in the bank. Right, OK, so could you give me a price? If, if, if someone watching right now has an Adelaide Rams poncho, what is it worth? So if you're pushing me for a price, it's, it's hard to say for... I'm pushing you. I'd say 9 up to $10. 9 or $10. OK. The Wayne Pierce testimonial port. What's the story behind this? Oh, well, lots of players had ports back in those days. You're looking at Wally Lewis had a port, Peter Sterling, Mick Cronin, Ray Price, the Immortals... And even the Illawarra Steelers brought out a bottle of port in 982. Yeah, but Junior Pierce, he was a renowned teetotaler. Never touched a drink, right. and yet he gets a bottle of port. Doesn't seem appropriate. Oh, oh well, there you right. go. It's in great condition. Yeah, that's great condition. So what, what, oh, two, twofold the question. What would this be worth, and what would it taste like? Ah, uh, well, unopened like this, you're looking at um, 50 to to $100, anywhere yeah. in that range on okay. the market. And uh, that would still taste all right, but if it had been open, it would taste a bit like a battery acid. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. This has been a popular item run past us for valuation. Dan Payne, of course he's got a copy from Dan's NRL Collectibles. What are you making this game, my friend? It's very exciting to look at. Well, without being at the state of origin, what better way to enjoy yourself? This, this is the this... next best thing. This is the next best <laughs> oh, thing. Amazing. And this is it. These 13 pieces and 13 blue yes. pieces and two sets of posts. So we set up for the game here. Yeah, this is it. All right, great. Kids just couldn't appreciate this, could they? No. They, they, they should get off Fortnite and, and play more of this. If they wanted to buy this game, how much would it cost? Are oh, you looking probably around $100 well, if they come up on eBay? $100, what a bargain. Okay. Your turn, mate. Uh, scrum card? Yep, so it says, I've lost the scrum, so the opposition halfback has the ball. He draws the neck. Oh, I've won the scrum. Your halfback number seven has the ball. If passing, pass to the left wing number five. I think it's a uh, general play, your go. When's this game end, mate? When does this game end? Attacking team, if passing, pass the second row forward. I'm out. <laughs>
I'm thinking as you watch this show, you may have a piece of rugby league history that you've forgotten all about. It might be in your garage or up in the attic or in a box somewhere. Well, on the fan, we want to uncover the lot. That's why we've ripped off this. Now, the biggest collection of rugby league stuff I've ever come across belongs to a guy by the name of Dan Payne. He has a business, Dan's NRL Collectibles. And on the fan, he's going to appraise items for us this year. And here he is. G'day, Dan. Oh, hello, Bossy. Now, the fans have been great even since last week when we promoted on our first show that we've got the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow. And the first item is from Jim of Mossvale, Southern Highlands of New South Wales. Have a look at this. A Balmain Tigers... Ashtray. Oh, what do you think of that? Wow, this is brilliant. Yeah, I haven't seen one of these for a long time. Okay, what year is that from? That's from 1988, the grand final um, year, and they put they made a special one with a gold tinge on it. Wow, Wh where would this have been made? China. And, oh, okay, anywhere in particular? Uh, Guangzhou province. Of course, big fans there. Um, what would Jim have paid for this in 1988? These retailed for two dollars fifty at the time. And what would it be worth now? Oh, on the collector's market, uh, two dollars seventy-five up to three dollars. Right, okay, fantastic. All right, now you've got a wonderful piece from your own collection. This is a wonderful piece of rugby league history that you've recently acquired, a New South Wales jersey as worn in the 1950s series. Yeah, that's correct. This is Frank Stanmore's uh, New South Wales jersey. He was 5'8". Yeah, and he played three interstate matches and also won against Great Britain in this jersey. So he wore the same jersey in every game. You'd have to take it home and wash it yep. and then come back with it. That's correct. That's extraordinary. And you said he's 5'8". But the number on the back is the number eight. So in 1950, the front rower was number one, and the fullback was 13, making the 5'8 number eight. Amazing. So how much would this be worth? Well, this is a very sentimental piece. It's his only one, and he went on to play for Australia that year. So something like this is worth about two to three thousand dollars. That is absolutely fantastic. Feel free to share with us your rugby league antiques on Twitter or Instagram at Fan Fox League. We've been blown away by our reaction and response to the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow. We've got some great pieces for you this week for our man Dan Payne of Dan's NRL Collectibles to look at. If you can just put your Raiders figurine there to one side. A beauty to start off with from Peter of Kingscliff. He wants to know, is this a collector's item? Now don't get a close up just yet, I'll explain why. He says, I've kept a sticker set for many years from my childhood days, but it wasn't until a decade later that I realised the one of Gary Jack has his Jats crackers showing. Mate, this is outrageous. Oh. You, you, know, you know of this? I've heard about this, uh, Bossy. This? And um, just to confirm there, as you can oh, see, yeah. his appendage is... His appendage is showing. Yeah. You're, telling, you're trying to tell me that they released a whole set to the public of these stickers with Gary's yes. appendage showing. It did, unfortunately. It was an oversight from Scanlon's and um, school kids were collecting them at the time, so... This is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, how, how much is that worth then? Like, oh, well, this were... sticker on its own, how much is it worth? Oh, that'd be a $5 sticker. $5 for Gary's appendage? Yep. That's the whole a set? The whole set would be $200. $200 for the set, that's pretty good. All right, let's put Gary's junk over there. Um, we'll go on to Texas Tom of Kingcumber, Central Coast of New South Wales, South Fan. What is this worth? Oh. And please explain. It's a South mug, but have yeah. a close look. I love the Rabbitos. What happened to the H, says Texas Tom. Do you know it? Well, Texas Tom's got a good question there. Like, yeah, that's um, right. It's a bloody like, good question. I know this one. This is a beautiful cup. 19, uh, 1977. I know exactly when this came out because there's a Scanlon's football card that came out at the same time called Rabbitos. Now, the South Sydney Marketing Department, they, they left out the H in that year by mistake. So this cup... They've been at the cop 69 years and they dropped the H. 
Well, that was just one year. They only made the mistake once. Right. How much is that worth then? Well, these... With a the mistake and all? Yeah, made in Hong Kong. You know, yeah, original cool. condition, they're Mixed. about 10 to $15. There's still got a bit of Milo in there, but 10 to $15 on the collector's market. That's a beauty. We'll put that with Gary Jack's You Know What. And that's the Antiques Roadshow. Thank you, Vossi. Before we get to the viewer questions, I do want to ask you about your appearance already on the show this year, the Antiques Rugby League Roadshow. <laughs> the footy card sticker that came out some years ago, uh, you were playing for Balmain, and yeah. your appendage sticking out the shorts. That was a bit unfortunate. Yes, it was just <laughs> one of those things that happened. Um, I, I didn't take my Speedos to the game, and I was a bit embarrassed to ask for another pair of Speedos, and I sort of played in my underpants. Old undies. Old undies. Didn't have much money back in those days. But you days. weren't expecting that that no. would then become a photo that's on a sticker that's no. collected by thousands like, of kids around Australia. It's, it's just for a flashing second, yeah. that was it, it was captured <laughs> and fun. it's there forever. Here's the question. Ah yes, Rugby League Antiques Roadshow and some viewers have sent in some great pieces for our man Dan Payne to have a look at from Dan's NRL Collectibles. You ready? Yes. Uh, from Elizabeth of Salamander Bay. What do you make of this? Have a look at this. Oh, <laughs> it's the new Pro Yo, Peter Sterling's own Yo-Yo. Wow. What year is this? Oh, this is around the 83, 84 mark. Yep. Um, and what makes the Pro Yo so different and special from the Yo Yo ah, are these moves. Ah, the tricks. You could do a, a drop kick, a reverse pass, and a feed the scrum. <laughs> As if. All right, and I know how much this retails for, so $2.95, but what could Elizabeth get for it right now? Well, the condition of this is superb. Yep. You've still got the, the, the collector stickers in the behind the, okay. the Pro Yo there. And stuff like this in this condition, you're looking at about $75 to $150 on the collector market. $75 to $150, that's yeah. fantastic. All right, that's the pro yo. Good on you, Sterlo. Uh, now, this one from Richard. He's a Balmain fan. He says he's moved to Brisbane, but all the way when he's moved through his life, he's taken this with him from Sydney. The Wayne Pierce testimonial port. What's the story behind this? Oh, well, lots of players had ports back in those days. You're looking at Wally Lewis had a port, Peter Sterling, Mick Cronin. Ray Price, the Immortals, and even the Illawarra Steelers brought out a bowl of port in 1982. Yeah, but Junior Pierce, he was a renowned teetotaler. Never touched a drink, and yet he gets a bottle of port. Doesn't seem appropriate. Oh, ah, well, there you go. It's in great condition. Yeah, that's great condition. So what, what, I'll oh, two, twofold the question. What would this be worth, and what would it taste like? Ah, uh, well, unopened like this, you're looking at um, $50 to $100, anywhere mm -hmm. in that range on okay. the market. And, uh, that would still taste all right, but if it had been open, it would taste a bit like a battery acid. <laughs> That's fantastic. Dan, thanks for your time as always. Feel free to share with us your rugby league antiques on Twitter or Instagram at FanFoxLeague. On the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow, this has been a popular item run past us for valuation. Dan Payne, of course he's got a copy from Dan's NRL Collectibles. What do you make of this game, my friend? It's very exciting to look at. Well, without being at the state of origin, what better way to enjoy yourself? This, this is the, the next best thing. This is the next best <laughs> oh, thing. Amazing. And this is it. These 13 pieces and 13 blue yeah, pieces and two sets of posts. So we set up for the game here. Yeah, this is it. All right, great. Kids just couldn't appreciate this, could they? No. They, they should get off Fortnite and, and play more of this. If they wanted to buy this game, how much would it cost? Are well, you looking probably around $100? If they come up on eBay. $100, what a bargain, fantastic. All right, now, stay in the Origin theme, my friend. From a great collector of Origin items, Tim Ryan of Brisbane, very br uh, proud of his Origin collection. What about this? This is the program from the State of Origin game that was played in America, in Los Angeles, in 1987. And a lot of our younger viewers wouldn't even be aware of that game. So let's go back and look at some highlights. 
From Veterans Stadium, Long Beach, California, the Two E's Interstate Challenge. here at uh, Veterans Stadium, Long Beach, California, on the French. Turns it back inside the ball, gets to the top! You like it better than uh, American football? I can't say it better than, but uh, I like it a lot. It's awesome, man. I can't believe it. It makes football look like a John Denver concert. Never gets old. Sterlo stuck in the banner. And this program, I mean, this is rare. Tim thinks this may be the only one in existence. Yeah, I reckon Tim's right. This is, um, this is one of the rarest programs of all time. Terrific program. This is, um, I don't know how he's got it out of the stadium. He mustn't have been drinking beer, but he's got it out of the stadium in pristine condition. This is a very expensive item to buy. Now, now in it, if we may, it does explain rugby league, an American guide to rugby league football. And it really is as simple as that diagram. Our fence, with its six downs, has to go through between the circles and the triangles. So, given that it may be the only one in existence, and if it was on sale, what's it worth? It's a tough one. Um, very good condition as well. Yep. Uh, uh, probably around four or five hundred dollars, I'd say. Four or five hundred, that's fantastic. We'll put it to one side. Thanks for coming on the Rugby League Antique Roadshow. Let's get back to the game. Okay. Your turn, mate. Uh, scrum cut? Yep, so it says I've lost the scrum, so the opposition halfback has the ball. He draws the neck. Oh, I've won the scrum. Your halfback number seven has the ball. If passing, pass to the left wing number five. In front. I think it's uh, general play, your go. When's this game end, mate? When does this game end? Attacking team, if passing, pass the second row forward number one. I'm out. <laughs> Feel free to share with us your rugby league antiques on Twitter or Instagram at Fan Fox League. When does this game end? I mean, this is just... Well, you don't want it then. <laughs> Your best. OK, Your best. There's got to be an investigation into this. There's got to be... Someone's got to be accountable for this. Ah, yes, it is time for the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow, and you guys have been fantastic. The pieces you are sending in to us to get appraised are sensational. Some beauties in the bag this week for Dan Payne of Dan's NRL Collectibles. Hello, sir. Hello, Bossy. You're going to get excited with this. This is from Danny, a Broncos fan. He calls this the greatest piece of Rugby League merchandise ever. Oh, oh, oh the, the Alanet Langer doll with a short stand, but... What do you make of that? Ah, oh, this is a terrific item, Vossi. Um, very glad you brought it in. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a great item. Look at the detail on that. The detail? But yeah. the, hang on, I would have thought the most important detail is to look like Alfie Langer. It doesn't oh. really look like Alfie, I've got to be honest. Well, there's a story behind that. Of course there is. Uh, originally, Willie Kahn was going to do the, be the doll. Right. And at the last minute, it was changed to Alan Langer. And where was this decision made? Was this where uh, in Janan, in Janan, in, in uh, Shandong, yeah, province. In, in the Shandong China. president, they made the decision to swap for when Willie Kahn. Yeah, the last, uh, the last, the last moment. Yep. So what's it worth? Uh, well, in original packaging, in mint condition, you're looking at one hundred and fifty dollars. Get out of town. One hundred and fifty. Uh, yeah, wow. but uh, this sort of condition. Short uh, down. Yeah, shorts down. The stitching mm. uh, around fifteen dollars. Oh, still pretty handy, $15. All right, put that to one side. On that same vein, what about this? The Sonny Bill Williams figurine still in the packaging. Look, What's another, that worth? Oh, this is a great piece. Um, you know, he's marketable all over the world. So, France, you're looking at um, about 15, 15 euros. 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 15 euros, OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Japan, probably 2,000 yen. 2,000 yen, Japan. Good. What about New Zealand? New Zealand, about $40. $40. What about here in Australia? Oh, we're Bulldogs fans. They're, they're about 20 cents. <laughs> well, that's about the most I'll pay. Beautiful. Well, then, while I've got you, just from my own collection, the Mark Gaznia figurine. What's that uh, worth? Well, you can't even give those away. Ah. All right. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, from Beck. Now, from Narringbar near Brisbane. She's got a little story with this item. Her dad bought this for her the last time South Sydney played North Sydney in 1999. He oh. came home from the football and gave this to his daughter. Oh, look, this is a beautiful... A, a, a bunny's mascot. Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, this is a great, a great item. Well looked after. 
Um, it was only it was only available at the game, the North Sydney <laughs> game. Income. What do you make of it? Where, where well, would this have been? It's a very interesting piece. Um, you know, this was made in Shenzhen, China. Mm. Yeah, of course. And yeah. they they adopted the old Rabbitohs 1984 strip, the Mitties wrapper. Oh, right, the Mitties wrapper. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And, and as I say, it hasn't got any official logo on it. Well, that was the um, the Shenzhen Touch at the time. Right. Yeah. Cheap copies. Exactly. They didn't have the logo. Okay. So for Beck's benefit, what is this worth? And she's hoping that one day she can give it to her own kids and convert them from Broncos fans to Rabbits fans. What's it worth? Oh, well, Beck's on a bit of a winner. Uh, you know, it's very unique. Uh, anywhere, anywhere up to $4.50. $4.50. Okay. All right. Well, Dan, thanks. Uh, Alfie Langer Dull, SBW, uh, Gaz, which isn't worth anything, and, uh, and a bunny that's worth $4.50. Doesn't get much better Thank than you, that. Bossy. Thank you, Dan. Rugby League Antiques Roadshow. Feel free to share with us your Rugby League Antiques on Twitter or Instagram at FanFoxLeague. Show on the fan with a little bit down the barrel. You've been very good at it before. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? It's on the back of the next stand up. George, all the best for the rest of the season, yes. my friend. Thanks for coming on the fan. No worries. That is the show for another week. Until next week, adios. Turn the set. That's okay. You're right. <laughs> Don't take me on, Joey. Where would this one have been, mate? Oh. GM, China. <laughs> of course, of course it is. And a total of 40 points have been scored. Oh no. All right, boys. There we go. There's got to be an investigation into this. This has got to be someone's got to be accountable for this. Into the Rugby League Antiques Roadshow with Dan Payne from Dan's NRL Collectibles. Welcome again. Glad to be back, Fossey. We have a very special piece first up from Arthur of Lismore. He says, I've had these, they belong to my late father, but I've never known what to do with them or what they could possibly be worth. They are football cards, rugby league cards from 70 years ago. They're of the 1948 kangaroos in this little pack. Yeah. You, you've known about these? I've known about these. This is an extraordinary set. Uh, a clothing company made it. Of all, of all things, the uh, Stamina Pants Company. So they sponsored the release of it. And the 48 Kangaroos, I will tell our viewers, I was lucky enough to go along to a reunion of the surviving members of the 48 tour more than a decade ago. They were great men telling the tales of being on the ship for six weeks, going to England and all of that. Just yep. remarkable rugby league stories. Oh, different days. Look, look, you've got players like Clive Churchill there. Immortal Clive Churchill, yep. Wally O'Connell. Wally O'Connell, he was in charge of uh, team morale on the ship. He played the piano oh. and, and a great player. Fred DeBellin. Fred DeBellin. Well, there you go. Now, so the Dragons lock forward Jack DeBellin. That is his grandfather, Fred, who was a member of the 48 Kangaroos. It's just amazing. What would this be worth, set like that for us? Set like this, with the original packet, you're looking around $700. $700. And now, people who don't know you, you actually do trade cards from all years and eras, but you go back to the beginning of time in terms of rugby league, a couple from 1910. Yeah, well, we've got a kicking duel here from 1910. Uh, John Lomas and Dally Messenger, the two captains, captain of England and Australia and it's um, a very unique set. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's a kicking duel, and you could get this, put a stamp on it, and post it. Exactly right, and that's what's happened here. They've, they've sent a letter back home. Amazing stuff. All right, well, they're not for sale. Now, we go from the sublime to the ridiculous. This is a plastic rain poncho. What's that worth? Well, they're worth about a dollar fifty in any reject shop. Good, good answer. Now, remember that figure. What if they had a rugby league attachment? From right. Matt Ellis of Dubbo, he sent us a photo of he and his brother Andrew in ponchos that were emblazoned with the Adelaide Rams logo from oh. 97 or 98. Why didn't you say so? I didn't know it was this. This is, um, this is the holy grail of rugby league. The holy rules. grail. It's the holy grail. A poncho with Adelaide Rams on it. Why, why is that? Well, it's so rare. At, at the end of the game, uh, they'll generally throw it in the bin, and I don't know of any in existence. Is that right? So if someone did have them, though, where, where possibly could they be kept? Well, hopefully they've got to lock the way in a safety deposit box in the bank. Right, OK. So 
could you give me a price? If, if, if someone watching right now has an Adelaide Rams poncho, what is it worth? So if you're pushing me for a price, it's, it's hard to say. For I'm pushing it. I'd say nine up to ten dollars. Nine or ten dollars. Okay. Dan Payne from Rugby League Antiques Thank Roadshow. You. Great as always. Nine or ten dollars. <laughs>